Ooh. I have a very long brick workout today. I think this is actually going to be my longest brick workout of training so far, but I have a about a four hour and 15 minute bike ride and then straight into around a 45 minute run. So should turn out to be around five hours. We'll see how it ends up being. But with that being said, one thing I really want to start focusing on is my nutrition. I really need to start mimicking kind of what my nutrition is going to look like on race day to start getting my body used to taking in this much nutrition while on a bike and hopefully not have any stomach issues. So what I'm going to do is I am going to prepare each of these bottles for basically one hour on the bike. So I have four bottles here. Again, it's gonna be about four hours and 15 minutes. And then I have gels that I got as well. I ended up getting, I got two caffeine gels from Martin and then two regular gels. And then just to switch it up and get a different flavor in there throughout the ride, I got a spring energy gel and this is apple cinnamon pie. So this will be a nice little treat on the bike, I would say. Now let's talk about the plan and what is going to be in each one of these bottles. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have G1M Sport here. This is what I've been using for a long time, but I am going to be putting two scoops into each one of these bottles. Now each scoop of this has 20 grams of carbs and 350 milligrams of sodium. So two scoops will give me 40 grams of carbs in each bottle. I need to make sure that I get some of those little metal shaker things to go in here because the stuff can get a little bit thick in the water. It will like clump up. So you gotta make sure you shake it up really good, especially when I have two scoops in each. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take this one right away at the very beginning just to get some caffeine in me to get going. But then after the first hour, I will have had to drink this full bottle. And then at the end of that hour, I will take this gel it has 25 grams of carbs. So this will in total have 65 grams of carbs for the first hour, 65 grams of carbs for the second. I'm gonna do another caffeine gel on this one, another 65 grams here. And then this will be at the fourth hour and it'll be right before I go on the run. But this spring energy gel has 45 grams of carbs. So this will end up being at the end, a total of 85 grams of carbs. And then I will have the run. It's always tough to mentally prepare for one of these long rides, especially when I'm doing it inside on a trainer and not outside. Last but not least, the cycling shoes. Oh man, it's like I'm strapping up and preparing for war over here more like four hours of hell. This just helps keep the sweat out of my eyes because that shit burns if it gets in there. All right, I'm just trying to mentally prepare for what I'm about to get myself into. Sometimes at the very beginning of these rides, it feels like it may not ever end. I can't like picture the moment where I get off this bike today. The Zwift music is always kind of a vibe. And it is time to do this thing. But first, let me, I'm gonna take that caffeine gel like I mentioned, just to kind of get things started. Cause it's still a little early. It's not even 7 a.m. yet, but you have to get up early and start these rides in order to finish by 5 p.m. All right, so, my first gel to start off this ride is down. This will be my first bottle for this first hour. Let's get it shaken up. You gotta shake these a lot, because again, it's easy for it to get clumped up in there. I'm really hoping that I can potentially take this bike off the trainer in the next week. It looks like it's supposed to be warming up a little bit here in New York over the next week, so I'm just praying that next weekend it will be time knock on wood. I hope I didn't just jinx it. So yeah, so this could potentially be one of my last long rides on the indoor trainer. But you know, I've obviously been doing majority of my riding indoors. And I feel like it has helped me improve so much though. 
So as much as I hate it, I'm thankful for it, I guess. I feel like I've been very effective and efficient on this trainer the last few months because I can obviously control all the variables when I am indoor on the trainer. I can change the wattage easily. I can change what kind of incline I need to do. I don't have any traffic around me. It's just easier to focus on hitting what I need to hit. Whereas when I'm obviously riding in Central Park or around the city, I just can't control everything. So as much as I hate being on this bike for hours, it's been extremely beneficial for my improvement. And I'm really just hoping that once I do start taking the bike outside and start doing all my long rides outside, that I don't see a dip in that improvement. I'm really hoping it just continues to slowly get better and better. But there's really only one way that I'll find out, so. So I am finishing up a 20 minute warm up now and I'm about to get into the working sets for this long ride. Since this may be one of my last long rides inside, I wanted to turn it into a nice workout and really just challenge myself through this. What the workout is, I'll put it up on the screen, at least the workout that you see on Zwift, but it's going to be 10 minutes at 165 watts, and then 10 minutes at 190 watts, 10 minutes at 215 watts, and then a recovery at 10 minutes at 140 watts. I'm going to repeat that four times. So basically, each big set is a total of 40 minutes, and then at the end, it'll be about 60 to 75 minutes of like freestyle and riding at my race pace. This should be a nice little challenging workout. I'm hoping that it will kind of keep it interesting because it's breaking it into small 10 minute pieces instead of me looking at like four hours total. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Okay, let me find some music. I don't need to listen to myself singing. I doubt that's what you guys want to listen to too. Especially if you're watching this while you're on a long bike ride as well. So I am a little over an hour and a half in and I've done two rounds of that main working set. I will say though that 10 minutes at 215 watts is starting to become a real bitch. It's been interesting, you know, learning more and more about power on the bike with watts and my cadence, etc. because, you know, last year for my first half Ironman, I honestly didn't pay attention to it at all. I had really no idea what I was pushing on race day, to be honest. I was just kind of winging it based on how I felt. But from what I've been learning though, my goal for this next half Ironman and then my full Ironman in Lake Placid will be to ride around 75% of my FTP. So based on my current FTP, which is 242, that will bring me to around 180 watts or so on average. So obviously the goal is to continue to improve my FTP over the next three to four months so that come race day, I can ride at a higher average watts than the 181. But we'll see how the next few months go. A key part of that though, again, will be for me to focus on my nutrition. So I've already finished one bottle, well, one and a half bottles of the G1M Sport. I've taken two gels. And so in a little over 20 minutes, I need to make sure I finish this one. And then I will take my next gel, which will be the Martin Caffeine Gel, just for another pick-me-up midway through. And yeah, but just gotta focus on nutrition now and keep practicing so that come race day, I don't bonk and die. Time for the caffeine gel. Halfway through. Yeah, I need this. I am almost three hours in, and I'm just now finishing the last round of that big set. That was tough. My legs are definitely feeling it. But thankfully, I've been following my nutrition to a T, so I'm actually feeling pretty good right now. I'm not feeling tired. I mean, I'm feeling pretty strong still, but my legs are a little fatigued, I will say. But overall, I feel pretty good, I would say. So that's good, but 
I'll be honest, my last couple of long brick workouts, I have not paid enough attention to my nutrition and I definitely started losing energy towards the end of those workouts. So that's why I'm really trying to focus on it now and start mimicking race day like I mentioned at the beginning. If I fall behind on my nutrition, then there's no way that I'm gonna be able to catch back up. And that's the last thing that I want to happen on race day. I would be so disappointed in myself if I put all this work in when it comes to training, hours after hours, and then I don't do well on race day and I bonk because of a poor nutrition strategy. That would be just a nightmare. And so I don't want that to happen. This ride is starting to feel a little entertaining though because today is actually the start of the Ironman Pro Series. So I'm watching the Ironman 70.3 Oceanside race. It just started like 15 minutes ago. So watching Lionel Sanders, Sam Long, Taylor Nib. There's a lot of pros out there. So it'd be cool to be at that race. I've never been to San Diego, but would love to go one day. Maybe next year, we'll see. We'll see how this year goes first. But yeah, I have about an hour and 15 minutes left. About to take my next gel. I'm gonna do the spring energy gel. The one that tastes like, tastes like apple cinnamon pie. It's got 45 grams of carbs in it. It's gonna be a nice switch up from the Martin gels. And then gonna crush this last bottle of the two scoops of G1M Sport. We're getting there, slowly but surely. So I have a little less than an hour left, and the goal for the rest of this ride is to ride at 75% of my FTP, which is what my race pace will be. So I'm gonna do 180 watts. I'm gonna try my best. My legs are definitely feeling it though. And also, actually let me pause this for a second. I gotta pee really bad after drinking three and a half of those bottles. Ugh, my bladder's pretty full. Now obviously I will not get off my bike during the race and do this. I'll just pee my pants most likely, but I'm not gonna do that inside because that would be absolutely disgusting. And I couldn't even imagine what Barry or you guys would think of me. So I'm just gonna go pee really quick. I'll be right back. Ooh. Lucky, what are you doing in here? Okay, that's much better. Oh, let's finish this thing out now. Oh, my legs are definitely feeling it. This run is gonna be fun. Oh, there it is. Oh, my legs, man. All right. Let's end this bad boy. All right. Four hours and 15 minutes done. Let's see, I did 70.16 miles, 2,342 calories burned. And that is a wrap on the bike. So now I just gotta hurry up and change. Put my running shoes on. I still have a little bit left of this. So let me just chug this really quick. I also have this gel that I should take before I go out there. God, please help me. My legs are actually really tight right now. I'm about to start this run. But first, let me just get this gel down. This should help me get through it. My legs feel like they could cramp up right now. Overall though, nutrition wise, I felt really good that whole time. Not one point on the bike that I feel hungry. 
which I feel is like a positive sign. My legs are tired, but they still like feel strong. I say that now, but we'll see how they actually feel on this run. So let's get started. Okay. I feel like this first mile really just gotta shake them out a little bit. Here we go, 45 minutes. And then this five hour workout is complete. A little over a mile in. The legs are feeling pretty good now. They're all shaking out. I'm at 7.55 pace right now. Pushing a little hard to be honest. Again, I'm just trying to set some race conditions here and see how I can do off of a long bike ride like that and see how hard realistically I can push and sustain for a decent amount of time. I have about 13 minutes left. And I'll admit, I'm gonna be done with this damn run. I'm kind of struggling through it right now. Just gotta keep powering through. We're almost there. Almost there. Oh, oh, oh man. All right, run complete. Holy shit, I just need a second. Run complete. Five hour workout complete. That run was five point, yeah, 5.55 miles. A little over an eight minute average pace. I'm super proud of myself for that workout today. That was a bitch, honestly. <clears throat> but I have to be honest with myself. I think I could up the nutrition just a little bit. I was really starting to die off at the end there on that run. That last like 15 minutes was like, I was really struggling. You know, I felt like I did well on the bike, but I feel like the true test of how you did on your nutrition on the bike obviously comes out to play on the run. And I could tell by the end of that run that I just need a little bit more. I mean, normally this is when I would be having my next gel or something that I put in my body. And obviously during the race, there's like water and Gatorade and stuff on the course, which I did not have out here. What a way to start a Saturday. I know it's in my future today, and that includes eating and taking a nap. I honestly don't have any more energy in me to keep talking. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're training for a half Ironman or an Ironman, good luck. Keep going, you got this even when it's hard. And now I need to go home and see who won Oceanside 70.3. But I'll see you guys in the next one.